Welcome to another episode of Rich in Relationship. And this week on Rich in Relationship, I'm going to go back to talking about something I haven't hit in a long time, which is divorce. I've been, we've been really focused here on Rich in Relationship, on relationships, how to make them work, how to have them be a win. But what do we do when there's no other option and we need to end the relationship? And in 2021, this is a serious question. I mean, we've had a year of pandemic now, and the outcome of a year of pandemic is that we're in some ways more socially disconnected than we've ever been. I mean, yeah, we've had Zoom calls and well, yeah, everyone's getting vaccinated and that's gonna change, but it's gonna take some time and some work to restore those relationships. So let's start from the beginning. Let's talk about what the experience is likely to be like. And if you're getting divorced, you can validate this. And if you're thinking about getting divorced, you can take this into account. It's very likely that you're gonna have, number one, a hard time getting to court. The courts are backed up. There's been a year of minimal court activity and courts, even though the pandemic is winding down somewhat, uh, are still seeing people on an emergency basis for the most part. So there's gonna be difficult getting into the courts. What does that mean? That means if you're getting divorced, you're going to be thinking about hopefully mediation or collaborative divorce rather than litigation. And for those of you who don't know, litigation is when two attorneys uh, negotiate with an intensity with the possibility of going to court in the background. And uh, to, so I don't over dramatize that. I think 94% of those uh, litigations settle out of court, but they do take more time because they involve a negotiation. And as part of a negotiation, there's usually a more aggressive stance. When people know that they're going into a negotiation and it's a less than friendly background, there's a tendency to ask for much more than you really want so that you can get the most out of the other person. And when two people do that, it can be very triggering for the participants. What I mean by that is when two attorneys are asking for the most from each other and Mrs. Smith gets a request for $10 million plus child support and Mr. Smith gets a request for $10 million plus child support and that's much more than either of them can afford, they both think, what the heck? What's wrong with Mrs. Smith? What the heck? What's wrong with Mr. Smith? And they get triggered and they get angry and they get upset. And so the litigation can take a long time because it's much more simple and easy to become triggered in the process. The process itself can be very, very triggering. Collaborative divorce is where each person hires an attorney and the attorneys represent the interests of each individual, but they agree that it's not going to be as combative. And then litigators, they sign an agreement in advance saying that litigation is not an option. And collaborative divorce evolved out of the recognition that litigation is very triggering and collaborative divorce is a lot less triggering. And so it's known to take 30% less time at least and, and cost than litigation. Um, and the advantage of this is that it, you want to come to an agreement. Even if the courts are backed up, once you have an agreement that you can operate under, it really doesn't matter if it's been signed by the judge or not because you both agreed to it and you can operate under it. And when two parents come to an agreement about how they're gonna raise their children divorced and start operating that way, it's much smoother for the children. And so collaborative divorce is a great option, particularly at this time to litigation. And of course, the third is mediation. A mediation is where both people go to a mediator and the mediator helps them to figure out an agreement. Uh, they, they are gonna have lawyers read the agreement afterwards and make sure that they're valid and that they represent their interests. And again, mediation is a friendlier approach to divorce. Not, necess it's not, not that it isn't contentious. Uh, there are contentions in mediation, but two people are usually getting along better when they can agree to go to a mediator. And Again, that agreement is going to be done. And once it's done, it can, the pe people can choose to live by it, even if the court hasn't seen it yet. 
So collaborative law and mediation are ways that you can get around the fact that the courts are backed up, but you need to have a willingness to not fight. You need to have a willingness to not be triggered as much or when you're triggered to manage it in a certain way. So let's talk a little bit about that. And then we're gonna flip back to what does all this mean in the context of the social environment of 2021? Well, in mediation and collaborative divorce, yeah, you're going to be triggered. Divorce is painful. Divorce brings up feelings. Let's get real. It brings up feelings. And they're not always good feelings. In fact, a lot of the time, they're less than positive. But if you're both parents and there are children involved, you need to find a way to handle those feelings so they don't spill out all over your children, spill out over one another, and interrupt the, the divorce process. And so it is highly advised that you get a divorce coach, a therapist, go to a group and get some support so that you have some place where you can release these feelings. And while you're going through the divorce process in 2021 or any year, you wanna take super high self care of yourself. So that means that you wanna get enough sleep, you wanna eat well, you wanna exercise, you want to be, if you can be connected to some kind of spiritual community because study shows that helps. You want to have a mindfulness meditation and or prayer practice in your life, something because that's going to help you manage your triggers. The studies show that mindfulness meditation and prayer shrink the amygdala and the amygdala is our sort of our primal uh, survival brain. The one that's always, that's what gets triggered when we get triggered. And when we're in our amygdala, we're very emotional, not super rational. Mindfulness, meditation, prayer help us to stay in our cerebral cortex and stay more rational. You want all this good stuff in your life so that you're not hurting the kids, right? Because you don't want to put the kids in the middle and you don't want them to become collateral damage because you totally forgot about them while you were you know, doing battle with one another. That's going to be true in any kind of divorce at any time. These are great, great tools. However, in 2021, they're even more important. Why? Because we've had a year of social disconnect. We've had a year of, for most people, not going to the office. For most people, not being plugged in their community. For most people, not being able to go to the gym until very recently. And so social interactions have been diminished. And what that means is our opportunity to talk about things and feel supported has been diminished. And so the need for self-care and managing our own feelings rises incrementally with that. And then when you throw into that, that not only are we all sort of naturally feeling disconnected, but the divorce process itself is alienating and disconnecting. When people get divorced, it is not unusual for friends, particularly married friends, to give you some distance. Now, it's not rational. They don't sit there and think, oh, Rich is getting divorced. I don't think I'll be talking to him. I think it's unconscious almost. I think it's more like they're afraid that they're gonna catch it. Or alternatively, what happens is one of the, one people in the couple is closer to the friends, particularly when they're parents, because one person in the couple was more engaged in the schools and most of the friends when your parents are made through the school system. And so that person tends to walk off with most, if not all of the support. And the other parent is feeling very disconnected. There's that word again. So we're not going to work like we were. School, there hasn't been a lot of school. So there's a lot of disconnect from school anyway. One parent tends to walk off with the friends. Sometimes all the friends disappear and we feel very unsupported and disconnected. So the need for self-care and finding connection is even more important. Turn to, if you have these people in your life, uh, your rabbi, your priest, your pastor, your, your uh, spiritual leader of any kind. These are good people to talk to. Therapists, coaches, again, groups, awesome, all good. All things that can be helpful in this process. The last piece has to do with communication, with the other parent with our friends and with our kids. 
So let's say that you have friends in your life and you don't want them to like disappear. What drives most people away and is most damaging to the children is when we hang out in blame, anger, and fear. And the problem is that in the divorce process, we are triggered and triggered again and triggered again and triggered again. And being triggered is all about fear, anger, and blame. And so first we're triggered and we get scared. Oh my God, I'm gonna lose the kids. Oh my God, I'm not gonna have enough money. Oh my God, I'm gonna lose the house. Oh my God, he's taken all my friends. Oh my God, uh, we're at my car, I, I have to sell my car. Oh my God, I'm gonna to need to make more money to pay for this for my life because all your expenses go up when you get divorced because you're living in separate households usually. So if the first thing that comes up is fear. The next thing is anger. Oh my God, that SOB, he, she is doing this to me, right? We get into a sort of a victim blame thing and then, and then it just starts coming out and we call up our friend, oh, Tom, what, hey, how's it going? Oh, you know, I'm getting divorced. You know what? He is such a jerk. He's taking the car, he's taking the house. My life is gonna cost so much more. You know what? He was cheating on me during the pandemic and I can't believe that, that, that he, this is happening to me, right? Who the hell wants to hear that? Not many people. They may wanna hear it. They may wanna help you with it once, but they're gonna want you to be moving on with that feeling. So really part of how we alienate our friends is by going on and on. And the reason is that divorce takes on average, a fast divorce is a year. An average divorce is more like two to three. So a quick divorce, one where you're managing your feelings and you're moving forward with the agreement and you're not having a lot of contention or when you're having contention, you're suddenly and quickly might be a year. It might even be six months if you're really on it. But a year is kind of what a quick, a faster divorce goes, how a fast divorce goes. A long, and typical divorce is gone for two to three years. So do you think your friends want to hear about that for two to three years? Do you think they want to hear about the pain and the suffering for two to three years? You know, if they were good friends, of course they would. But the reality is that they can only allow their experience to be shifted so much. And when they're in there hearing about somebody else's pain again and again and again, it pulls them down and they unconsciously pull away. And so that's why I'm encouraging you find other resources to talk about this and manage those feelings. And the other thing is our children. The face we need to be showing our children, particularly regarding the other parent, is we need to be always uplifting the other parent to the best of our ability, which feels almost impossible in the face of divorce because we're pissed at them. They're divorcing us. We're divorcing them because there's something that they did. They're divorcing us because something they think we did. We're pissed at them. And so it makes it really hard when we get in front of our children to not say, oh, you're going over to her house. Yeah. Oh, she's got a boyfriend now. Hmm. We don't want to talk to them like that. But we, where we want to be with our children is we want to be talking to them about their lives. We want them to know that we support them. We want them to know that we still honor the other parent as the mother or father that they are depending on, no matter how evil they may seem to us, no matter how narcissistic they may seem to us, no matter how awful they may seem to us. Children want to know that we honor them because they came partially from that person and they love that person and they learn from that person. And, you know, maybe in another episode, we can talk about how do you manage what your children are going to learn if the other person on the other side really is toxic. But in this episode, let's just stick to divorce and what you can expect right now. And so in order to make sure that we're focusing on the positive, that we have our eyes on the prize, so to speak, with our children, that's a lot of personal work. Uh, and we need a network of support. If you're a dad and you're interested in a network of support, I've got a support group that I'm looking at starting. And you can reach out to me at rich at richinrelationship.com or I've got a link that's just going live, bit.ly forward slash dads win. bit.ly forward slash dads win. If you're a mom and you're looking for a support group, I'm starting a support group for moms also. 
and I haven't created a Bitly link for that, but reach out to me, direct message me, uh, use the dad's win link if you want, even though you're not a dad, you know, your mom's win. I guess I need to make a mom's win Bitly link. Because I feel like the time has come where because of the cost of the pandemic, the fact that many people aren't making what they were and because of the cost of divorce and because of the incredible sense of disconnection that's out there, that some groups would be a really good thing. You know, in a group, a group call it therapy situation, you have mutual support with people who are going through the same thing as you are. You can see that some people have it much worse than you do and some people have it much better, but you can have some sense of where you are in the world. We all tend to think our situation is the most awful. You also get topics talking about things that are important to you. How do I present my best face to my children when I want to kill her or him? Um, how do I have a relationship with my friends without talking about the divorce all day long? You know, how can I stay positive in the face of something that's so painful? Well, a group is a great place to talk about that and strategize and have those things come alive for you so that when you walk out into your life, you're ready to really focus on what's important. That's what I have for you today. Um, the punchline is divorce is more stressful than ever. It probably is gonna take more time. We all need more support than we ever did. And if you're looking for vehicles of support, Give me a call. Thank you.